whether you're a leader or not, you're curious about how to avoid burnout. Uh, well, you'll be surprised how much of the answer is right in front of your nose. So let's get on topic with an understanding of what burnout is, what its impacts are, and what you can do about it. First off, what is it? So burnout is basically unmanaged chronic workplace stress. Uh, and, you know, we're exhausted by our work and we're pretty negative about it, too. We might be cynical about it now, you know, might feel a little hopeless. Um, and because of this exhaustion, right, our our impact wanes. We we have way less efficacy over the things that we want to be doing. Um, and, and there's more than that, right? There's there's health impacts. So this one study, which I'll link to in the description below, um, called the uh, physical, psychological, and occupational consequences of job burnout. Um, looked at a, a whole kind of literature review, number of different studies, and they found that um, the major impacts are physical in nature, right? Mental, and then of course the, you know, the the work-related one, less efficacy. So the physical ones, it's like if it's poor health habits, right? You don't really have time to take care of yourself anymore. Um, and then that, of course, compounds things, um, heart disease and worst case scenarios, pain and inflammation from, you know, from not getting enough movement in your life, um, disrupted sleep, disrupted metabolism, disrupted immunity. It's a lot of things. Um, in terms of the mental impact, uh, depression was underscored, actually. Um, and obviously, you know, the worst case scenario, the impact in some cases can be uh, death by suicide. So it's pretty serious, this this year burnout thing. We want to get a handle on it. Um, so what can we do about it, right? Uh, well, before I get to that, let's take a look at a short clip from our episode of The How on Leadership. As I said before, even though I've had some really horrible bosses, 98%, I'm just making this number up, of of leaders or bosses are kind, benevolent, well-intended humans that need our support to be able to trust, you know, back to this thing of holding everything on their shoulders. And, you know, it's really interesting to think about how um, just changing that frame from leadership is something that I have the power to distribute to leadership is something that that is endemic in everyone and that we can collectively access. Mm. Let me just underscore that leadership is endemic in everyone and we can collectively access. That feels really good. It feels like a better match for the world we're in. Yeah, I sometimes also like to sort of imagine it almost like a like a pool that's there, like a pool of water, and anyone can just, you know, tap into it. And at mm -hmm. different moments, different people are taking, you know, different mm -hmm. amounts of water from it. Um, but it's like mm -hmm. sort of it's there everywhere all the time and, and might be just tapped into. Mm -hmm. Nice. I really love what Susan, Lisa, and Fran are exploring here. Uh, you know, this idea that leadership is endemic in everyone and that we can collectively access it. Um, and, and I think this is a great way into four ways to kind of prevent burnout. Um, uh, so this first way, right, is to tend to your social networks um, in and outside of work, right? Uh, if, if leadership, right, is something that we can collectively access, um, we need to have uh, a collective, we need to have people around us to access it with together. Um, and so we need to strengthen our social networks uh, as, a, as a bit of a buffer against all of the stress. But how? Well, uh, just have a team around you, lean on them for support. Um, and if you happen to be a leader, think about maybe stepping back and allowing others to lead and empowering them to do that. Um, you know, this can look like shared decision making, uh, you know, uh, adopting a mindset that's more around embracing failure uh, as like a learning tool rather than something that you're trying to avoid at all costs and kind of 
creating space uh, and um, yeah, just room for people to try new things, right? To step into their leadership some more. Um, what else can we do? Well, uh, second way, get rest. Um, just take breaks, uh, have uh, time in your day where you're playing, uh, quality time with family and friends, uh, time in nature, this sort of thing. This is all really vital. Um, but again, how, right? Uh, just start with a simple question. Ask yourself, what gives you energy? And then try to make time for that. Uh, even and especially if it means stopping something else, because you're kind of in a situation where you need to be stopping some things. As one uh, one member of Greater Than put it, um, they said, it's all about cutting yourself some slack, not overdoing stuff, being lazy, getting enough sleep and movement, this sort of thing. Okay, the third way, third way we can prevent, get aligned and get in control. Um, that sounds kind of harsh the way I put it there, but when we think about our work, um, uh, it's even better if our values are aligned with the work. We have a sense of purpose about it. And not only that, but a sense of autonomy and control over the workload. Um, this is what we all want. But but how do you get there, right? If, if you're finding that you don't have these things, it might be time to think about changing your role. Um, you know, if you're overwhelmed, cynical, negative about what you're doing, uh, it might be time to think about how you might move within your organization into something else. And if that isn't possible, then to just quit, uh, you know, as ideally as soon as possible. Uh, but we all know that that isn't always the case. So, uh, you know, begin to plan and set the wheels in motion for, for what exiting can look like for you. Um, and hopefully one day finding uh, the quote unquote dream job, right? Whatever it is that you want to be doing that that's aligned uh, and on purpose, so to speak. Um, but beware, there's a dark side here. Um, another research paper that I'll share before uh, below is work as a calling. Um, they talk about kind of the pernicious way that burnout can creep up with folks um, who uh, you know are happily working in their purposeful work. Um, so this this kind of persona of the happy workaholic who's content with that situation. This is something to just kind of be aware of and watch out for because it can eventually become uh, a burnout situation. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously if you see this in others, this, this is also a place where you can intervene with your, with your peers and, and check in with them. Okay, the fourth way uh, is really simple. It's just looking right in front of your nose, as I said in the beginning. Uh, and, and this is how it all starts, right? Because from a systems perspective, all of the elements of burnout, uh, they don't operate in isolation. Um, chronic stress leads to problems like poor sleep and health habits, which in turn lead to more stress and less resilience. And this, uh, this is like a positive feedback loop that escalates. And before you know it, you're burnt out. You're burnt out. <laughs> this is why uh, really all of the things that I've said so far here um, it begins with noticing what's going on, simply acknowledging that this might be happening and not necessarily in a guilty way, right? Self-compassion is key and also awareness of all the abundance around you. You know, a lot of what uh, Lisa Fran and Susan were chatting about there was just this recognition that leadership is everywhere in the organization. We just have to get out of the kind of positional mindset, you know, that it sits with one person. Um, First of all, that person might be getting burnt out. Uh, and second of all, if we can share that more, right, we are able to step into a posture of shared capacity as well as shared leadership, right? Um, but to get there, you have to foster this self-awareness about what might be going on uh, and, and kind of step outside of the feedback loop for a moment, right? Um, so one last thing I'll, I'll share. Uh, when, when we're depleted, when we notice that we're depleted, let's say, our body is sending a pretty clear signal. Uh, and <laughs> what we do with that signal is also pretty important. Our mindset about that is pretty important. Um, burnout and, and fatigue and exhaustion and all that, it's not another uh, to-do item. That's that's like the last thing you want to do is is kind of add another thing to the plate. It's not a battle to be won. We're not battling against exhaustion. Uh, 
Um, so just being mindful of like how we frame this to ourselves, right? Uh, and and rather seeing it more as a sign or a signal uh, that our body is sending us, or our mind is sending us that that there's a change that's needed, that there's a transformation that's required, um, and and kind of taking it as a as a way to step into a more vital relationship with your work, and most importantly as a call to stop doing some things before starting anything else. Um, okay, so thank you for joining me today uh, for this quick little mini sewed format, uh, we're calling on topic. What do you think? If you found this video helpful, uh, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Uh, and if you have a topic you'd like us to cover on this channel, please just leave a comment below. And if you want more, check out related episodes of the how. Lastly, a big thank you to members and explorers within greater than who shared the ideas that I incorporated here. So JD, Ned, Miriam, Armin, Joe, Zarko, Sarah, Amy, Jane, Brendan, Fisher, and Anna. I got as many of your ideas in as I could and we'll draw on more of them for future minisodes, I'm sure. So thank you very much. Okay, bye for now, folks.